Chapter 111 Zhang Wai camped at Jiangti. The army of Wai camped outside Didao. Wang Jing welcomed Chen Tai and Deng Yai and prepared a banquet to celebrate the raising of the siege and also rewarded the army with gifts. Then Chen Tai sent up a memorial to the ruler of Wai, Kao Mao, eulogizing the magnificent services of Deng Yai, who was rewarded with the title General who pacifies the West. For the time Deng Yai was left in the West, he and Chen Tai placed their men in cantonments in Yangzhu, Liangzhu, and the counties round about. After Deng Yai had rendered his thanks to the emperor, Chen Tai spread a great feast in his honor, and in congratulating his guests, said Zhang Wai slipped off in the night because he was broken, and he will never dare to return. I think he will, replied Deng Yai, smiling. I can give five reasons why he should. What are they? First, although the soldiers of Shu have retired, they have the self-possessed and confident look of holding the victory. Our soldiers are really weak and broken. Second, the soldiers of Shu were trained and inspirited by Hu Liang and are easy to mobilize. Our generals are all of different periods of service and our army indifferently trained. Third, the Shu soldiers often use boats for traveling, and so they move at leisure, and the troops arrive fresh. Ours do all their journeys on land, and they arrive fatigued with marching. Fourth again, Didao, Nongsi Nanan, and Kishin are all places suitable for defense or use as battlefields, and thus the army of Shu can conceal their intentions and strike where they will. We have to remain on guard at many points, thus dividing our forces. When they concentrate, they have only to reckon with a part of our force. And fifth, if they come out by way of Longsi and Nanan, they have the grain of the Kangs to depend upon, and if they choose Kishin, they have the wheat there. These are the five reasons why they should make another expedition. Chen Tai was overcome with the clear vision of his new colleague, Sir, your foresight is godlike. I think we need feel no anxiety about what the enemy can achieve. The two leaders became the best of friends in spite of the difference of age. Deng Yai spent his time in training the army, and garrisons were placed at all points where surprise attacks seemed possible. There was feasting also at Jiangti, and the occasion was taken to discuss a new attack on Wai. But assistant Fan Jian opposed, General, your expeditions have partly failed many times. You have never scored a complete victory. But now on River Yao the army of Wai recognize your superiority, and why should you try again? There is small chance of success, and you risk all you have gained. Zhao Wai replied, you all regard only the largeness and population of Wai, and the time necessary for conquest, but you do not see five reasons for victory. The assembly asked what these were. First, the fighting spirit of the soldiers of Wai has been badly broken on River Yao, while that of our soldiers, although we retired, is unimpaired. If we attack, we shall certainly succeed. Second, our soldiers can travel in boats and so will not be wearied with marching. Their soldiers have to march to meet us. Third, our soldiers are thoroughly trained. There's our recruits a mere flock of crows, quite undisciplined. Fourth, when we go out by Kishin, we can seize upon the autumn wheat for food. Finally, they are scattered, having to defend various points while we can concentrate on any point we wish, and they will find it difficult to bring up reinforcements. If we miss this chance, can we hope for a better? Sai Hopa said Deng Ai is young, but he is deep and crafty. He has certainly taken great pains to secure the regions under his charge as general who pacifies the West. Victory will not be so easy as it was before. Why should I fear him? cried Zhang Wai angrily. You should not lord the spirit of the enemy and belittle that of our own soldiers. But in any case I have made up my mind and shall take West Valley land. No one dared to offer any further opposition. Zhang Wai himself led the first army the others followed in due order, and thus the soldiers of Shu marched out of Zhangti to Kishin. Before they could reach Kishin, the scouts reported the hills already occupied by the armies of Wai. Zhang Wai rode forward to verify this, and surely enough he saw the Wai camps, nine in number stretching over the hills like a huge serpent, and all arranged to give each other support. Zai Hopa spoke only too well, said he. The plan of those camps is excellent, and only our Zhu Jian could have laid them out with equal skill. Returning to his own army, he said to his officers, they must have known of my coming, and I think Deng Ai is here too. 
Now from this as base you are to send out daily small reconnoitering party showing my banner. But different flags and uniforms, blue, yellow, red, white, and black, in turns. While you are thus distracting attention, I will lead the main army by daunting to attack Nanan. Now Su was sent to camp at the mouth of the Kishin Mountains Valley while the main army marched. As soon as Deng Ai had heard that the enemy would come out at Kishin, he had camped there with his colleague Chen Tai. But when days had passed, without anyone coming to fling a challenge, he sent out spies to find out where the Shu army was lurking. They could find nothing, and so Deng Ai went to the summit of a hill to look around. He came to the conclusion, saying Zhang Wai must not be in this camp. He must be on his way to capture Nanan. Those soldiers in the Shu camp were nothing but a feint, accentuated by the daily change of uniform. Going to and fro for days, the horses looked tired, and their leaders are certainly none of the ablest. Therefore, General, I advise an attack here. If it succeeds, the Dunting Road can be occupied, and Zhang Wai will be unable to retreat. I think I ought to try to relieve Nanan. I will go by the Wucheng Mountain, and if I occupy that, the enemy will try to take Shangri. Near that place is a narrow and precipitous valley called Block Valley, just the place for an ambush where I shall lie and wait till Zhang Wai comes to take the Wucheng Mountain. Chen Tai replied, I have been here over twenty years and have never known so much of the military possibilities of the place. You are very wonderful and must carry out your plan. So Deng Ai marched toward Nanan by double marches. Soon they came to the Wucheng Mountain, where they camped without opposition. He sent his son Deng Zhan and Shi Zhu and each leading five thousand troops to lie in wait in the block valley and not to betray their presence. In the meantime, Zhang Wai was marching between Dunting and Nanan. Near the Wucheng Mountain, he turned to Zaihu Ba and said that hill is our point and Nanan is close. I fear lest the artful Deng Ai may seize and fortify it. They hastened, anxious to reach the hill before the enemy, but it was not to be. Presently they heard the roar of barns and the beating of drums, and then flags and banners appeared all of why, and among them fluttered the leader's standard bearing two words, Deng Ai. This was a sad disappointment. The army of Shu halted, and veteran soldiers of Wai came rushing down from various points on the hill too many for the troops of Shu to drive back. So the advance guard was defeated. Zhang Wai went to their help with his central body, but when he got near the soldiers of Wai, had retreated up to the hill. Zhang Wai went on to the foot of the hill and challenged, but no one came out to accept. The soldiers of Shu began to shout abuse, and kept it up till late in the day, but they failed to provoke a fight. As the army of Shu began to retire, the Wai drums beat furiously, yet no one appeared. Zhang Wai turned about to ascend the hill, but its defenders prevented the by stones thrown from above. He hung on till the third watch, when he tried again. But he failed. Thereupon he went down the hill and halted, bidding his soldiers build a barricade of wood and boulders. The troops of Wai came on again, and the Shu troops scrambled to run to the old camp. Next day Zhang Wai brought up many transport wagons and placed them on the slope as the nucleus of a camp. But in the night a number of Wai troops came down with torches and set fire to them. A fight ensued which lasted till dawn. Seeing that a camp could not be made there, Zhang Wai retired to consider new plans with Sai Huba. Since we cannot take Nanan, our next best plan is to try for Shangri, which is the storehouse of Nanan. Leaving Sai Huba on the hill, Zhang Wai led a force of veteran soldiers and bold officers along the road toward Shangri. They marched all night, and Don found them in a deep valley which the guide said was Block Valley. That sounds too much like Cut-Off Valley, said Zhang Wai. And if a force held the mouth, we should be in sorry straits. While hesitating whether to advance farther or not, the leading troops came back to say, we have seen a cloud of dust beyond the hills which seems to indicate a body of soldiers in hiding. So the order was given to retire. At that moment the armies under Shizun and Deng Zhan came out and attacked. Zhang Wai alternately fighting and retreating tried to get away. Then Deng Ai himself appeared, and the Shu army had enemies on three sides. They were in grave danger, but Ba came to their rescue, and so Zhang Wai escaped. Zhang Wai proposed to return to Kishin, but Ba said, We cannot go thither, for Chen Tai has destroyed the force under Bao Su, and he himself was killed. All that was left of the army has gone back into Hanzhong. 
It was no longer a question of taking the dumping road. Zhang Wei sought out by roads to march along. Deng Ai came in pursuit, and as he pressed hard on the rear, Zhang Wei sent the others on ahead while he covered the retreat. Soon Chen Tai came out from the hills and Zhang Wei was surrounded by a shouting body of the enemy. He fought all directions, but could not clear the way. He and his horse were very weary when Zhang Nai, who had heard of his straits, came to his rescue with a body of cavalry. Zhang Nai cut his way in, and Zhang Wei immediately broke the siege and got out. Zhang Nai saved his general, but lost his own life in the melee. Finally Zhang Wei got back into Hanzhong. From Hanzhong the death of Zhang Nai in battle was reported to the latter ruler, who bestowed suitable honors upon his family. The Shu people blamed Zhang Wei for the serious loss of life of their relatives in the military operations that had just failed and Zhang Wei, following the precedent in Jiating of the late Lord of Wuxing, asked that he himself should be degraded in rank retaining, however, the command. He was put back to general of the real army. The country being now cleared of the enemy Chen Tai and Deng Ai prepared a banquet in honor of victory and gave rewards to the soldiers who had fought. Chen Tai sent a memorial to the capital upon the services of Deng Ai, and a special commission of Si Mo Zhao brought Deng Ai higher rank. The title of lordship was given to his son Deng Zhang. At this time the style of the reign in Wai was changed from right origin, the third year, to gentle Du era, the first year, A.D. 256. Si Mo Zhao commanded all the military forces and made himself empire's commander-in-chief. He assumed great pomp, and whenever he moved outside his palace, he was escorted by three thousand mail-clad gods, besides squadrons of cavalry. All power lay in his hands, and he decided all questions, so that the court was rather in his palace than in that of the emperor. Plans for taking the final step constantly occupied his thoughts. The question of mounting the throne was openly mooted by Jia Chang, a confidant, who was a son of Commander Jia Ku. Jia Chang was holding the High Councillor office in the Prime Minister's palace. Jia Chang said, Sir, all real authority is in your hands, and the country is not tranquil. The only remedy is for you to become actual ruler, and you should find out who are your supporters. Sima Zhao replied, This has been in my thoughts a long time. You might be my emissary to the East to find out the feeling there. You can pretend you go to thank the soldiers who took part in the late campaign. That would be a good pretext. Accordingly, Jia Chang traveled into the south of River Huai, where he saw Zhu Dan general who guards the east. This officer was from Nanyang and a cousin of the late lord of Wuxing, Zhu Liang. Zhu Dan had gone to Wai for employment, but had received no significant office while Zhu Liang was the prime minister of Shu. After Zhu Liang's death, Zhu Dan's promotion was rapid. He was now lord of Daoping and commander of the south and east of River Huai. Jia Chang went to Zhu Dan to ask him to convey to the army the appreciation of the soldiers' services. Jia Chang was received courteously, and at a banquet, when host and guest were both mellow with wine, Jia Chang set himself to discover Zhu Dan's feelings. Jia Chang said lately, in Luoyang there has been much talk of the weakness and lack of ability of the emperor, and his unfitness to rule. Now General Si Zhou comes of a family noted for state service for three generations. His own services and virtues are high as the heavens, and he is the man best fitted to take the rulership of Wai. Is this not your opinion? But Zhu Dan did not favor the suggestion. On the contrary, he broke out angrily. You are a son of Jia Ku of Yushu, and your family have received the bounty of Wai. Yet you dare speak of rebellion. Jia Chang said, I only repeat what people have said. Zhu Dan said, if the state is in difficulty, then one ought to stand up for it even to the death. Jia Chang said no more. He soon returned and told Si Mo Zhao what had been said. The rat, cried Si Mo Zhao angrily. Zhu Dan is exceedingly popular there in the south of River Huai, and if he is left too long, he will do harm. Si Mo Zhao began to take measures. He wrote privately to Yu Chen, imperial protector of Yangshu, and sent a messenger to Zhu Dan with an edict making him minister of works. This meant that Zhu Dan had to come to the capital. But Zhu Dan knew that Jia Chang had done him mischief, and he interrogated the messenger, who told him that Yu Chen knew all about the matter. How does he know? General Sima Zhao sent him a private letter. The messenger was condemned to death. 
Then Zhu Dan placed himself at the head of his personal guard and marched to Yangzhu. The city gates were closed and the drawbridge raised. He summoned the gate, but no one answered. How dare this fellow Yu Chen treat me thus? cried Zhu Dan. He ordered his troops to force the gate. Ten of his bold generals dismounted, crossed the moat and climbed the ramparts, where they slew all who opposed them, and opened the gate. The others entered, set fire to the houses, and began to fight their way toward the state residence. The imperial protector sought refuge in a tower, but Zhu Dan made his way up, and reproached his enemy, crying, Your father, Yu Jing, enjoyed the bounty of Wai. Yet you have not sought to repay the kindness of the ruling house, but you want to help the rebel Sima Zhao. Before Yu Chen was able to answer, Zhu Dan slew him. Then he sent to Luoyang a memorial detailing Sima his many faults, and made preparations for war. He called up all the militia of the south and east of River Huai to the total of one hundred thousand, and took over the forty thousand troops who had surrendered on the fall of Yu Chen and gathered supplies. He also sent advisor Wu Gang to Wu for aid, offering his son Zhu Jing as a hostage for his good faith. At this time Sun Jun had died and his brother, Sun Chen, was prime minister. Sun Chen was a man of cruel and violent temper, and had put many officers to death on his way to power among them, were Grand Commander Teng Yin, General Liu Zhu, and Minister Wang Chun. The ruler of Wu Sun Liang, although intelligent, was helpless in his hands. The messenger, Wu Gang conducted Zhu Jing to the residence of Sun Chen in Shidu, who asked what he had come for. Wu Gang explained Zhu Dan is a cousin of the Lord of Wuxing in Shu. Zhu Dan had been in service of Wai, and seeing Sima Zhao depose the his prince and oppress good people, he wants to punish the tyrant. But his force is not enough, and he asks for your help. To show his sincerity, he sends his son Zhu Jing as a token of good faith. Wu Gang's request was received favorably, and Sun Chen sent 70,000 troops with the full complement of officers Guan Yi and Quan Dun as commanders, Yu Quan as rear guard, Tang Zai and Zhu Yi as leaders of the Van Wen Kin as military guide. They marched in three directions to attack Wai. Wu Gang returned to shout and report success. Zhu Dan thought all was going well and prepared the army for a general attack. In Luoying, Zhu Dan's memorial angered Sima Zhao, who wished to set out to revenge the attack at once, but Jia Chung preached caution. My lord, you derived your power from your father and brother, and people have not had time to discover your own virtue. If you leave the court, and there be a revulsion of feeling against you, you will lose all. Rather request the Empress Dowager and the Son of Heaven to go with you in the expedition, and nothing is to be feared, said Jia Chong. That is an excellent plan. Sima Zhao went into the palace and proposed it to Her Majesty, saying Zhu Dan is in revolt, and my colleagues and I intend to punish him. I beg that you will accompany the expedition, as the late emperor would have done. The empress was afraid, but dared not refuse, and the next day was requested to set out with the ruler of Wai Kao Mao. Kao Mao said, General, you command all the armies and dispose them, as you will. Why do you ask me to go? Sima Zhao replied, your majesty is wrong to hesitate. Your ancestors traveled over the empire and wished to unite the whole under one ruler. Wherever there was a worthy opponent, they went to face him. Your majesty should follow the example and sweep the land clean. Why fear? Kamal, fearing his minister's terrible power, consented, and an edict was issued for the commands to mobilize 260,000 troops of two capitals. Wang Zai, general who corrects the south, was in command of the Van, and Chen Kian, general who pacifies the east, was second in command of the Van, Shi Bao, army inspector, and Zhu Kai, imperial protector of Yangshu, led the imperial escort. The army moved into the south of River Huai like a great flood. Zhu Yi, the leader of the Van of Wu, encountered them, and both sides drew up for battle. Zhu Yi rode out and took the challenge, but was overcome by Wang Jai in the third bout, and he fled. Tang Zai also rode out, but was also beaten in the third encounter by Wang Jai. Then Wang Jai ordered a full attack. The troops of Wu were broken, and retired fifteen miles and camped. Thence they sent tidings of their ill success to Xiaochen. Zhu Dan and Xiaochen led out his bold and strong soldiers to join forces with Wen Qin and his two sons Wen Yang and Wen Hu. Then they set out against Sima Zhao. Now here is a check to the armies of Wu. 
And why is gallant men advance? The next chapter will tell how one victory.